Hey, Rural Life Church, it's Kong, the associate pastor. I'm going to build off with what Pang had said about anxiety in kids and focus on anxiety in teenagers in light of our Healthy Heart, Happy Home series. Now, Pang mentioned that anxiety revolves around children's experience with worry, danger, and uncertainty, which is often caught from their parents and caregivers. I think this is true with our teens too, and because they're a little older, a little bit more independent, I think they're also impacted by influences like their peers, social media, and other things that influence them. I think about our teenagers, and I must say, I think they are probably experiencing the most adjustments out of us all. Not only have their worlds shifted, but many of them are going through physical changes with their bodies, and others are anticipating huge transitions from grade levels. Their lives are adjusting so much, and I think whenever there's adjustments, good or bad, there's room for anxiety to creep in. And so I believe all our teens have experienced a degree of anxiety. Um, so today we're going to take a closer look at what anxiety is, how it affects our teens, and what we can do about it. Now, anxiety is a term that sometimes is tossed around loosely, and so I think it's best for us to understand what it is. And I think it's tossed around loosely because we all experience it, experience it differently. And so let's start with an ex a definition of what anxiety is. According to the American Psychological Association, they define anxiety as an emotion characterized by feelings of tension, worried thoughts, and physical changes like increased blood pressure. Now, anxiety is accompanied by physical feelings, but the important thing is that anxiety is a psychological state. It is the tension we experience in our minds and the worry in our thoughts. And sometimes these, these things can come out physically. We can feel them physically, whether that's a panic attack or, um, you know, we feel tension in our body. And so with anxiety, a little bit of it's okay, but an excessive amount is unhealthy. And so let's see how that affects our teenagers. Um, anxiety, we all experience it differently. So our teens are going to experience it differently. I'm going to list some symptoms that can show up. And so um, take a look and see if these are things that show up in your teens. Anxiety can affect sleep, can affect sleep patterns. It can affect diet and appetite. Uh, performance in school and work can be affected negatively. Teenagers can experience physical tension in their body, dizziness, racing heart. They can be short in, of breath. They can show up as worrying excessively about their competence or the quality of their performance, or they might just have negative thoughts. Now, some may demonstrate it externally by acting out or misbehaving, while others experience it internally. And those who experience it internally, sometimes it's a little harder to pick up. But the important thing is be aware of your teenager's behavior and detect if there's anything different. Detect if there's a change in their pattern. If we do see these things, what can we do to help? In some ways, anxiety and mental health is something that's very new in the Hmong community. And it's okay to feel uncertain, but don't ignore it. I think one of the most practical and easy things for us to do is to name when we feel anxious. Model to our teenagers that we feel anxiety. Normalize your anxiety um, and let them know it's okay to be anxious. And I think when we let our teens know that it's okay to be anxious, they become open to sharing their anxious situations with us. I think another practical way is be empathetic. Listen to your teenagers' worries and concerns and validate them. It's so easy to minimize what they're feeling and say that, you know, what they're feeling is nothing. And so be empathetic. Validate them. Find ways for teenagers to relax. When a person is overly anxious, sometimes they are overstimulated. Cortisol is a stress hormone that is released into the body when we're anxious, causing us to perceive that there's a threat. Now, this is healthy when there is an actual threat, but when we experience excessive anxiety, when our teens experience excessive anxiety, um, and cortisol is continually being released, the body sometimes counters that by having panic attacks, and that's no fun. And so find ways to help your teenagers relax. Relaxation helps increase blood flow to the brain, which helps prevent us from feeling like we have to be on high alert. And lastly, seek out professional help if anxiety becomes excessive and out of hand. 
It can be scary seeking out professional help, but knowing what is wrong and being able to find a solution is better than pretending that everything is okay um, and, and not knowing what, what's happening. Sometimes that can be worse. One extremely helpful resource that has recently come out um, is from Fuller Youth Institute, and they have material on, material on youth and anxiety. Um, our youth ministry Thrive is currently using their anxiety curriculum um, to teach our students about noticing anxiety in their daily lives. And the Fuller Youth Institute also offers four pa- podcasts that are extremely helpful and practical to help our teens with anxiety. You could check out this resource at fulleryouthinstitute.org slash anxious world. Lastly, I want us to take a look at what the Bible says. And so let's look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 through 30. I think this is a helpful passage that talks about anxiety and gives us just a really practical thing that we can do for our teens when we experience anxiety. And so let's read in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 through 30. And I'm going to be reading from the ESV. So this is what it says. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his life And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Now, the context of this passage talks about how we need to make God priority over everything else because he cares for us. Jesus tells us twice in this passage to not be anxious about our life because God will take care of us. He says that in verses 26 and 30. And so the takeaway for us here, I mean, we could spend you know, the next hour or two dissecting what this passage means. But I think the simple takeaway in in caring for our teenagers and their anxiety is to care for them. We need to validate that. We need to support them. We need to provide what is necessary to help them through their anxiety instead of ignoring it and minimizing it. And so caring for a teenager, teenager's anxiety, like how God cares for us, is a way for us to have healthy hearts and happy homes during times like this. And so I hope that you will take some of these into account and take care of our teenagers during these anxious times. Blessings to you all.